Good afternoon. Um, thank you uh, to Val Valkyrie Project, to MIT Labs, and Catherine Basso for inviting us. Um, uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of Green Hill Anti Ballistics Corporation. Um, with me here is uh, my co uh, founder, partner in crime, inventor, and chief technology strategist. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about is nanotechnology. And really, nanotechnology is Mother Nature. It's Mother Nature's perfect, elegant structures, specifically the hexagon and the sphere or circle. All right. I think I can operate the. Uh, OK, great. Yes. And we have applied nanotechnology on the nano scale to create force FDP, force disruption platform. What we do is use nanotechnology to capture and disrupt the force that comes in uh, by 50% in the thickness of a dime, reducing that force by 50%. <coughs> and we do that because we find that um, the biggest problem is TBI. TBI is a fancy word for brain damage. There's regular TBI and mild TBI. No one wants mild brain damage any, or in any form whatsoever. Now, what's interesting is that in both women and men, at the time of blast, it's, it's equally the same. But the consequences are vastly different. For example, when we look at, uh, there was a study done on OEF and IEF, and 12.7% of women had TBI, but 60.9% had mild TBI. And the consequences of that are severe to very severe deficits. And that's what we want to focus on. We want to focus on the FDP's use in preventing TBI. Our solution is to place our FDP in a helmet shell between the underplate of the helmet and the top of your comfort in, uh, line. And we are able to reduce 50% in the thickness of one millimeter or that dime. And it is, doesn't affect the way you are wearing your existing helmet at all. It's just, it, but it provides an extra level of protection that you need that is not currently available in the hardware that you have. Because right now, we, I think we in the US have the best hardware gear, but it does not address the forces that are unforeseen that you can't see, but that are going through that shell, through the foam, and into your brain and your body. These are additional examples of where we can put it, because it can be uh, a coating or a layer. Uh, in helmets, in the bo body armor plates, as well as in vehicles. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't require any retooling or redesign. You can literally insert that helmet shell in the field without any tools. Now, th what does it look like? This is a sheet of FDP. As I said, Mother Nature, hexagons, and spheres. We shape this particular use case in spheres, and it's flexible, resilient, and it conforms to the shape of a female body form. It also hardens on impact. And for, as your body changes throughout that menstrual cycle, it can change with you. And that is why when I say nanotechnology is mother nature, and it's elegant, and it's perfect, the structure is we're able to harness that power in our material. And it is uh, not because conventional wisdom is, you know, I have all this force coming in. I should go thicker, heavier, bigger. We are unconventional because we're able to do that on a nano scale. And that's why those shapes are amazingly important, just like a beehive. It's the most efficient shape, the hexagon, and spheres. And I'll show you the spheres in a minute. This is what I'm talking about. 
This is a uh, electronic microscope uh, for, uh, magnified 4,750 times, where the energy comes into our composite. It coats the surfaces of our nanoparticles, tens of thousands of nanoparticles, and reduces the forward traveling wave. But the action of the nanoparticles further reduces and distorts that energy. And then we added blast walls, which further reduces that. So essentially, I am creating a pinball reaction in my composite in order to perfect protect you from the forces that come in that you can't see. Because you're, certainly your helmets, your body plate will, uh, will receive that projectile. But then that extra thump or those bruises, that's where we come into play. This is, again, 4,750 times magnified <coughs> in comparison to foam. That's magnified 150 times. You, a picture tells a thousand wor uh, words because you can see why we're so effective on the nanoscale. We're literally putting sand on, your, in, on the nanoscale to protect that energy. And we can conform to the shape of whatever our material sits on. Because if you're laying down on the beach on the sand, it will take your body's shape. And the person next to you, their shape's going to be different, but it's doing the, the same work. Um, we, of course, it's not only us that says this works. Because as a warfighter, there's two questions you always ask. Does it work? How much does it weigh? It works. Um, we had it validated by the Department of Energy because we can use it on anything. It's a kinetic energy reduction dissipation platform. So if it's uh, vibration, sound, a force of impact, we can handle that. Um, so what this is telling you when it's compared to orthopedic insert, <coughs> Kevlar, or D30, is that the thinner we are, the more energy we can absorb. So out, it's not a one size fit all. Basically, you tell us how much force you want to reduce, where you want to put it, in the helmet, body armor, any place, and we will select the, one of the eight configurations we have, and this is uh, all third party validated and tested. And um, we, all this is not possible uh, without a team of uh, different uh, people with different talents because we bring, uh, we place a different lens on each, on the same problem that we solve together. Um, we're a team, and we are uh, currently in the process of uh, delivering on our first individual work project with our US SOCOM CRADA. Uh, CRADA um, is, we're helping in uh, divine, defining standards for over, uh, blast overpressure. Um, and we're also in the industry, in the sports arena, because there's a lot of force in football, lacrosse, uh, baseball, soccer, and we will be growing, so we would welcome people who want to join the team because we, we simply have a blast every day. Every, we're, if you're, we're not a, a nine to five job, and every day is different. Every day we solve a problem and we do it together, despite the fact that we talk different languages because we come from different disciplines, but we're still um, trying to solve the same problem. And um, again, a few takeaways. We stop the force by 50% in the thickness of dime on nanoscale. Our mission is brains and bodies. Um, we want everyone to come home. And I'm a proud mom of uh, our fourth uh, gen military uh, service uh, boys, one in the Navy and one in um, the Marine OCS. So I can take any questions you would like to have. And make sure you stop at the booth so I can actually show you the helmet shell prototype that we have right now for um, the Ops 4 helmet with the US OCOM. Yes? I, um, just to clarify, uh, I want to better understand the application. Is it for force 
attributed to blast overpressure, back force or, or blunt force trauma, or ballistics? Um, it is I, for all those. Any form of kinetic energy okay. that you present to us, we can handle. You just let us know how much force you want to reduce, where you want to put it, and how, what shape, what size. We, that's why it's uh, not a one size fit all. We have the patent, uh, 19 patents in the global portfolio for this technology, and it is not, uh, it is on the structure. We have optimized the structure, and we have also uh, a selection of, currently we're using polystyrene, but we can use any material because our patent is on the structure, not a particular material, not a particular design. So it's sand on the nano scale. Where do you want us to put it? <laughs> Great, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what's the production time for, like, say, one helmet insert or one ballistic insert for a torso? Um, the on a three millimeter, we're talking about. Uh, if on a single run, we can do it in a couple hours. Oh. Um, we the uh, and all our uh, supply chain is within the U.S. and North America because I am a first generation uh, Chinese -Amer American. My uh, I came here uh, to the U.S. Uh, not speaking word of English, but uh, graduated valedictorian Wellesley, 19 years at IBM, and um, I had an opportunity uh, to solve some difficult problems. Uh, part of a dirty dozen that got uh, shipped to China, figure things out, um, managed uh, a non-secure computer site up and running, um, the, one, the only one of its kind out in China for IBM, then had an opportunity to shape strategy. So it's, we actually had to figure out, uh, because we've had, uh, Zach came up with the idea 10 years ago because of his agency experience in counterterrorism. But it took us, um, and we went to a lot of people to ask them how can we have a scale up production methodology. There was no good answer. We were a bit ahead of uh, our time in that. They say, well, I don't know, because I can't handle the size that you're talking about. You know, 320 uh, nanometers. We, we can't deal with that tiny scale. So we figured it out. And it was through trial and error and just working with a bunch of these guys. We argue all the time. The discussions are intense. <laughs> but our mission is the same. We're saving brains and bodies. We want everyone to come home. And it's a passion of both myself and Zach uh, because both our boys are doing their time, their service, and their fourth generation. So. Um, we have to, it's not only business, but it's personal. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much.